Hello, this is Gary speaking to you live, 2012. Now, I've enjoyed some interesting talks and uh, have really gained some insight into studying the book of Revelation and as well as studying it, teaching it to my own spouse and coming to comprehend the Word of God in a very real way and realising that... <coughs> It is through the name of Jesus, you know, that we have the victory through his power and might and working at working in our lives that we come through all the all the mist and all the uh all the uh, darkness to use a a uh, proper language to just describe that which the enemy throws at us. I can use other language, you know, but it wouldn't be fitting for you to hear. Now, I just want to share some uh, personal testimony with you. You know, that it's taken me some time now to come to this stage. But we know that the enemy is real. We know that he works out his plan and his purposes on earth. He seeks to manipulate and control and uh, and to take as many people with with him to eternal destruction. Now before we come into the light of the gospel of the truth and the Lord reach down to us in our mortality and lifted us up to the heavenly place for some of us we found ourselves in some pretty deep stuff pretty dangerous position and just to relate some of that to you from my personal experience found in myself at the tender age of really seven just seeing manifestations of spirits and I can remember in uh, my bedroom when I was in I had to put a board across between two chests of drawers which were alongside my bed. I had to put a board across to block up any excess to the side of me that was exposed because I was frightened of being attacked, sensing some evil and uh, knowing that it was real and couldn't explain it to anybody else but knew that it was there. I can remember just uh, once... I was looking, gazing out of a window, looking at the the with the sun shining through, and looking mesmerised. And uh, my mum come in and said, "Gary, what are you looking at? And what do you see?" And I just was just captured by this light, knowing that the Lord was calling me, and there was a battle going on. Seven years old. Now there's a spiritual battle going on. And it starts at a young age. And if you've got children, you know that when you need to pray for them, pray because there's a battle going on. And even at that tender age, we just need to cover our children in the, the grace of God. We need to pray for them that the, the precious blood of Jesus will deliver them from that which seeks to bind and bring destruction. From early age, just taking hold of the mind. Now knowing I've seen something of the Lord and at a young age I used to go to Cubs like the Scouts really at the end of my road. I remember one one time I was playing around on my own around this church. Slipped up. Messing around I've, I was chasing a cat <coughs> and uh, tripped and my knee, my left knee was embedded in a pebble dash wall of the church and I was bleeding from this knee bleeding and uh, as a child you know when you're bleeding and you're hurt and you scream for help and uh, I was only uh, five you know five hundred meters away from where I lived but I was just crying and all of a sudden a man picked me up I felt no fear 
no caution about this man. He, he picked me up in his arms and he said, it would be okay, don't worry, you're fine. And he carried me home. And I'd never met this man before, but I knew him. And I knew that I would know him. That's probably the better way of saying it. And my mum just happened to walk outside as this man approached my house where I lived. And he gave me to my mum and carried me in his arms and just passed me over. And mum said, thank you. And I, I asked my mum to this day, who was that man that carried me home when I was injured? It's a young child from that church. He said to me, Gary, I do not know. I do not know who he was. Whether he, he was a lord or the, an angel of the Lord, he was, I know I've been protected from an early age. And since then I have sought the Lord knowing that there's the Lord and there's this, this other person, this other person of this other entity or force and there's Satan I felt him, tried to shield myself from him, growing older and, as I said, shielding the side of my bed off with a wooden board across two uh, chests of drawers that led my right side open, I just knew that there was a battle game going on. Knew there was a battle game going on. I just knew. And... As years went on, you know, I just, as I grew older and I become a teenager and uh, went from an angelic looking boy with beautiful blonde hair and lovely blue eyes and that everybody adored, everybody loved, to a spotty, greasy teenager that suddenly become rejected by the what? suddenly become, in my point of view, unloved because the love that I received before at a tender, at a tender age, it kind of, in my mind, become diminished. Now I'm older, I realise that I've gone through that childness, angelic, kind of looking beautiful boy to a spotty, normal age teenager and all the emotions that, and all the... Uh, I tossed around, I tossed around the guys with that and the changes that you go through and I took that personally that, well, nobody loves me anymore. I become a monster. Become the, uh, on the list of the most spottiest boys in the year. In the fourth year I become Mr. Spotty number four. I couldn't look in the mirror anymore. My face had been dis, disfigured by spots and rubbing the spots with acne cream and all this sort of thing and since you look in the mirror I can remember in this house I lived at from the year 11 to years 23 in this Victorian house that uh, had past history of occult activity where people used to meet practice Ouija boards and uh, I used to speak to my old neighbour who was in the nineties then, I was only about fifteen, sixteen, and she said, she told me the things that went on in this house and I was frightened and I knew that there was a background in my own family where they would played around with a Ouija board and things had happened, you know. Things had happened and told of frightening things where spirits had appeared and frightened my cousins and feeling a coldness and on hallways, on stairs, and starting to understand these connotations of of life, not really having the biblical armour to deal with it. <clears throat> Knowing there's a battle going on, I felt the the intensity of my life as a teenager, trying to reach out from the Lord and just trying to take hold of these truths. And one day, the Gideons. Come to our church, come to our my school. Handed out a Bible, a Red Gideon Bible, and I read that. I lived in a Victorian house, and three stories up in my room, I used to go up, drinking milk and eating biscuits, reading this Gideon's Bible, knowing that I had in my hand as a truth. I didn't really understand. 
didn't really, at that stage, just beginning to understand that I, looking back, taking hold of the elementary truths of the Word of God, but knowing that Father God had already embraced me in his arms, already knew the battles I was going to go through and the life-threatening experience that I was in a experience that, that could have taken my life, knowing his protection now, looking back, what a wonderful God we have. What a wonderful Saviour and, and all his marvellous works and all that he does. He takes hold of us in our infancy and in our weakness. He loves he loves the children. I have three children and I have such a deep and uh, an understanding of the importance that it has to teach them the word of God. Teach them, give them a chance. Give them the armor that they need. Give them that advantage. The battle is real. Oh, it just it overwhelms me, the experience that I had and... Uh, Moving into this Victorian house, even when my parents turned up, my mum saw two what appear to be female girls staring at her through the window, black eyes, into the house, and just an old couple of their own, and no children. Who were these entities looking out the window? What were the manifestations that I saw, and keys moving in their doors on their own, and Things moving up on the, the walls that intimidated me and paralysed me that I couldn't move. And like the experience that I sure I shared a few weeks ago. And I now know the name of Jesus. And through the blood of the Lamb we have the, the ability in his name to rebuke and, and cast off these things that seek to oppress us and hold us down. The Lord, even when we're young and in that tender age, he deals with those things. When I was a child, I thought it was a child, and now as a man, I cast off those childish things, and in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. And we need to stand in the gap for this generation of young people. Stand in the gap and proclaim to them the good news of the gospel of God, knowing that the Lord Jesus has a heart for them. Whether we do it or not, he enters into our dimension. He, he takes out, he ministers to the young. I can totally and utterly identify with that. Now I've been paralysed, a tender age of... 14, 15. Not been able to move them out of my bed and not been able to move a muscle. Now I know what happened. Then I didn't. But God still entered in and he directly intervened and lifted me up. Proclaiming the truth to you. Cutting through this arena of falsehood and just lies and games and being on top maybe I can preach a good word is better than your word and maybe you can preach a good word and maybe you can get a bigger audience what does it matter it doesn't matter at all what matters is the Lord and his marvellous love his marvellous fathering and tender can approach to us our children and moving on I did the Ouija board and so ex unaccepted by friends and coming desperate, not fully able to put the pieces of the puzzle together. I did that Ouija board and the enemy told me he was going to kill me. And only a few nights after, I had to protect my own mother from a man coming towards her with a knife. I disarmed him rather rapidly. I couldn't stop hitting him. 
from my perspective, I was disarming that which had seeked to intimidate and frightened me from a young age that had paralysed me on a bed and I had just had enough. Now, this man was uh, recovered and tried to push a court case against me even though he went for my mum with a knife and I just acted in self-defence. It came to nothing, you know. But I knew that the enemy was out to take my life. And looking at my background and the way that the Lord had entered into my life, I called out in Him. I said, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. I cannot deal with this enemy on my own. Lord, save me. Jesus! And then a light come into my mind and into my heart and into my eyes. I was lifted up. Lifted up and knew that I would I was safe and in a secure position that I'd 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 already been seeking from my early age. I'd got there. I was there and he was my Lord and I just entered into that deep re and living relationship. He was now in my life. Taking hold of that truth and that reality. Those things that I'd seen the the mirrors looking in the mirrors and it's like looking into a sea of moving water and shape shifting and my face to become distorted and become something different frightening me I, be I was I becoming a monster or something oh. people in that Victorian house and prayed and seen manifestations of animal sacrifices and all sorts of things I do not know what went on in that house, but I know for all the experiences that I've shared with you since I was five, six years old. I can share with you now after going through that experience and coming through and having my own children now and studying the Word of God and being in church and knowing this, the Lord has the victory. Now looking back, I can remember used to go in holidays, Christmas times, and knowing the enemy was real, you know. Seeking to not look into what he has to offer, but look into what the Lord has. I can remember that at night I used to look and I could see an eye. An eye, I could see the pupil with just one eye. Not the eyes of the Lord, the, the eyes of the Lord go forth throughout the whole earth, the eyes of the Lord Pural. This was one eye and it was trying to capture my attention and I looked right as I turned my head right, it went right. As I looked left, it went left. As I looked in the middle, it went in the middle. Trying to divert my attention away from this entity, what it was, I knew what it was. Couldn't divert myself away from it, then looking into it and sucked into this deep dark hole into this kind of state of not the light of the glory of God but this counterfeit light it had a warmness about it it had a what I would explain as a counterfeit light a warm embrace but a counterfeit the real light of the Lord and now I can extinguish between the, the two the enemy masquerades himself with a light, an angel of light, you know. And he does. Do not underestimate his power. He leads the whole world astray. The intellectual people of the world, the minds of the world that potentially lead the governments and everything else, taken in by him. The lambs for God. Be tuned to the light of the Lord the gospel of the truth he has the victory gives us the victory in all things gives us all things I just wanted to explain that to you I'm taking this any further not eight. adding on to it <clears throat> Uh, 
a battle for every human soul is very, very real. Very real. We need to be tuned to the Lord. Yesterday I was driving from my house and there was a brother and a sister. I gave way to in a car in front of me and I drove up the road. And the Lord, I knew there was something the Lord was going to do. I knew there was something the Lord was going to speak to me through, some experience. End of the road. He turned left, I turned right. Just before that turning, I noticed a lady. I've, I've known her from years back. She used to clean for a customer of mine and some eight, nine years ago. Her name's Carmel, a lovely Irish lady. And I've driven past her before and both the brother in front of me and used to go to the same church and I, myself, we I drove past and I said, Lord, I said, what? I said, Lord, you, I said, the Lord said to me, stop, go back. Stop, go back. And I just said, you, you need to give this lady a lift. Somewhere in the window, electric window, my Volvo V70, and do it. We want a lift, I said, and she said, "What?" Well, I said, "I'm going to Petswood. I'm going to David and Barbara's. Used to clean for them." She said, "Well, yeah, I'll, I'm going to Farnborough Hospital. I've had an injury," she said. And I've hurt my arm, and to get in, get in the car, I'll give you a lift, and she got in the car. And it was only then that I, I noticed that she had a plastic bag wrapped around her left arm and I could see blood red and I said what have you done I, and she said I was cleaning the oven and I had gloves on and they had the glass from the oven and I just caught my arm and it's like such a big and I'm just I'm going to A&E and I said look you don't need to be waiting on the corner of the road to catch a bus to A&E if that was me I need some sympathy and love and, and she said well you and she said but thank you but she prayed that someone would stop and it wasn't it wasn't that I'd known that I was doing I was just just knew that the Lord said stop reverse back and she had prayed and I took her I took her to the hospital and she just I said do you want the air conditioning on or, or, where do you want it and she said I'm fine I'm not in shock and she was bleeding and she was so brave. She's been a nurse herself. She said, I just don't want to get this infected. And I said, that was me. I said, I'd been looking for comfort and, you know, a bit of pampering men do, I suppose. She was so brave and dropped her off. And she said, she said, what is your name? I said, my name is Gary. I mean, I've known her, but she just didn't know my name. I said, Gary. She said, God bless you. And she said, are you? You're my saviour. I'm not a saviour, but in that situation, I'd acted as Jesus to her. The Jesus had come to her in our time of need and met her in that. Now, we're too superficial. We can go on YouTube and do all these sorts of things, proclaiming the, how evil the government is and everybody else is, and yet we miss opportunities over and over again. And not to judge the people in front of me that went to the church that I went to. They missed that. They did not tune in to what God was saying. Passing by a, somebody that is in need, going to a Bible meeting, we do that. Be tuned. That's what the Lord is saying. Be tuned. Do not be too blind and too headstrong to cancel out or to ignore what the Spirit is showing you and the needs in your closest community. You approach the big picture like the government and everything that's going on missing out the needs of those that are closest to you. Those that you can reach and touch and minister to and bring and uh, bring a lot of encouragement to and you don't do that because your mind is so on bigger things. The Lord is contrary to that. The Lord ministers to the lambs to those that we 
the many dry past without leaving knowledge in with a need. Now, there are probably times that I've driven past someone with a need and not realised it. I'm not making myself any better than somebody that drove past me that I knew went to a church, same church, whatever. But the Lord has given me something that I've got to hold on to and, t and talk to you about because it's on his heart. You have a need, I have a need sometimes. And you can minister into my life, and I can minister into your life. And rather than getting too hook up with what's going on in the bigger picture that the Lord is going to deal with, well, he might be just calling you and me to deal with what's right in front of you, and you miss it, and I miss it over and over again. Take hold of this. Take hold of it. Please. You have every opportunity and I have every opportunity to be Christ-like in our own road, in our own estate. Yes. Do not be too blind and too proud. And too, God, have I got to go to this meeting, that meeting. Well, you could be driving past somebody or someone. You could fulfill all that. What Christ calls you to do. There and then, that will really, really have impact and bear testimony. We are to come, don't forget, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. This is Gary signing out, speaking to you, because I want to be real. I, I just really enjoy the opportunity just to do this but knowing that I don't want to miss the opportunity that I might have tomorrow to help and to give aid to the seed of Abraham where Christ can use me and move in a powerful way to minister and bring healing and bring comfort and bring love and bring that which really the Lord Jesus is about the Lord Jesus his sacrificial love is more than about our pride and our ambition and what we want to do and achieve it's more about meeting the needs of others the Lord says love the Lord God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and love your neighbour as yourself love your neighbour as yourself his plan has brought us this marvellous opportunity to move in these ways listening to his spirit taking hold of his power and his voice he is the voice that we are to listen to not being distracted by the spirit of the world and by our own ambition our own agenda but just being humble enough to embrace this reality in our lives is the most incredible thing that you and I can do is the most incredible thing that we in the can achieve and bring glory to God in a very real way. To Gary signing out. God bless you and keep you keep you and speak to you soon. I'm not edited. Okay. Good night.